Hey, my name is Tomasz Pożytek and in today's video I would like to update you um, on the latest updates that were introduced to Power Platform Pipelines so that ALM uh, approach for citizen developers and makers. So just a short intro, the Power Platform Pipelines is somehow a new way that Microsoft encourages us to make ALM, so the application lifecycle management in the Power Platform. And as you may read the uh, release notes or maybe the uh, roadmap for the Power Platform Pipelines, you will, you know already that this tool, that this platform is going to be embedded into Power Platform Admin Center. So as of today, as, as what I'll be showcasing to you is still requiring you to set up a separate uh, Power Platform environment and then deploy this solution in there and configure it in the uh, grant specific security roles and so on and so on. The desired um, approach or the desired final result is to um, have this solution built as a part of the Power Platform Admin Center. But, um, well, this is still a far away from what DevOps Pipelines offers you. However, DevOps requires you to be more fluent in well, creating the pipelines itself. Um, on the other hand, the Power Platform Pipelines is a quite, a, well, I mean, is a decent solution that requires you to know nothing about how to really program pipeline and so on. However, it has its limitations and as well, it has its required, uh, really requirements. So like one of the requirements that it has is that every target environment, so every environment where the deployment is taking place to, has to be uh, a managed environment. And as of today, managed environment require from every user that has access to this environment to have a premium license of any kind. So knowing that you can easily answer yourself um, this question if the organization you're working for is ready to use Power Platform Pipelines. But if it is, then I highly encourage you to uh, well, benefit from having it because it really um, streamlines and somehow put the boundaries on how the ILM is performed in the, within the organization, like who can create the deployments, where that is where those deployments could take place and so on and so on. And um, one of the limitation that Purple from Pipelines had in the past was that it did not allow you to make a deployment using either a service account or uh, or another user's account. Um, so that all the connection references that were set up in the target environment were set up using the account which actually triggered the deployment. However, um, with these latest updates, you're now able to either deploy a solution to a target environment using a service account uh, or the application account or a specific user's account. Now, speaking about um, the application accounts on the one that you register in Azure Entra ID, you have to be aware that if the solution you're deploying is using any premium features like, for example, RPA, then on the target environment, you need to grant a premium license to the flow, obviously, because you are unable to grant a premium license to an application account. Okay. So with that having said, let me navigate to, um, to Azure and I'll just show you what you have to do first to create um, to create a deployment using um, application account in Azure. All right, so without having said, let's do it. Okay, so now um, I'm in my Microsoft um, Azure. I'll navigate to Entra ID and here navigate to Enterprise Applications where you need to we need to create a new, sorry, um, not, not uh, enterprise applications, but app registrations, sorry. And under the app registrations, you have to register a new app. Um, name it wisely, because its name is going later to be visible 
as the owner of the solution deployed to the target environment. So I'll call it um, deployment account. Um, yeah, you want to use it only within the single tenant and then register. The next thing you have to do is to navigate to API permissions and you need to grant this application um, the impersonation within dynamic CRM. So that would be um, the user impersonation. That is the request, the required, um, the required um, permission level, permission scope. Okay. Um, and with that, you are now able to navigate to um, the Power Platform Admin Center and navigate first to the environment where you have the Power Platform Pipelines installed, so the Pipelines host. And here you have these um, server to server applications where you need to add new app user. So let me find it. Um, it was the Pipelines deployment account. Um, well, you can add it obviously to just one single business unit. And this account must be the Power Platform deployment administrator, I mean, the deployment pipelines administrator in this environment where you have the pipelines installed, right? So that's the first requirement. Okay, okay, okay. Now, the second thing, you need to navigate to every target environment. So to every place where this target, where this deployment is going to take place. So in my case, it will be the prod. And here again, you need to register under um, server to server applications, this application that you just registered in Azure. However, here, um, it will be given the security role called system administrator. All right. And now navigate to Power Platform Pipelines. So to, um, well, this environment where you have installed the application, um, the, the solution, and you will find here the, the application called Pipelines, uh, well, 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 sorry, um, to the apps. And you will find here the application called the Deployment Pipeline Configuration. So just run it. And let's build now a new uh, pipeline. So I do have already the environments configured. So I have my dev, prod, test, and so on. And I'll create a new pipeline. So this new pipeline, let's call it um, all right, and create. So now I have this deployment with pipelines app. And right here, I can deploy, also configure the stages. Um, I will link the development environment, which is the dev. And then I can create a new deployment stage. Let's call it dev to prod. Um, and uh, the development environment, uh, Right, I don't, I am not using here any, any previous deployment environments because it's just straightforward from dev to prod. So the uh, target deployment environment is going to be my prod. Okay. Now I want this pipeline to use the delegated deployment, right? And I want it to use the service principle. Now this SPN client ID, this is what you find in here. Oh, and one more thing that you have to remember about is that under roles and sorry, under the owners, you have to grant yourself. I mean, the, the person who is now creating the pipeline needs to be an owner of this application. So I'll grant myself the ownership. All right. So as now I am the owner and I need to just copy the application ID, so the client ID, and this client ID has to be put in here. Yeah, let's navigate back to the enterprise applications, actually, and let's find that pipeline here. Okay. Um, 
All right, and here we have owners as well. Oh, maybe this is the place where I need to grant myself the ownership. I'll as again just select myself first. Okay, so now let's try again. Um, it's two a, two e a, two e a. To EA to EA is it that ID? Yeah, to EA. Okay, so let's try. Bang! All right. Oh, yeah, that was that was hard. Okay, so anyways, um, once you've created the um, uh, app registration, so when, once you've registered the app, navigate to enterprise applications, and in, within the application within the enterprise applications, when you find the application you have just created remember to grant yourself as an owner of this application um okay um <clears throat> so with that we have it already created so one more important step is the approval so you have to create an approval i mean you have to create a process in power automate which is triggered when an action is performed uh, and the and the, the action that is performed is the on approval started now you may want or you may don't want to create the approval for this kind of of um of the scenario if not then simply remember to put anywhere in the flow that perform an unbound action that you have to update approval stat status of that um deployment uh so with the approval status 20 it will say um, let's say approved or accepted so the um, deployment will actually start and if you want to reject you need to use this ID 30 so that's the same as it was in my previous video the, about the power platform pipelines the only difference that you have to make is that in all these actions which are performing an unbound action on the database record related to your power platform deployment you don't you can't use your account so the account which is building the flow but you have to create uh, a new connection reference that is going to use not an OAuth but the service principle so in here you have to back navigate back to uh, to Azure let me just use the, uh, to Azure I will um, copy the application ID yeah, where was it here? So the application ID, um, the tenant, and the client secret. Well, for that, you have to navigate back to app registrations and to your pipeline deployment account. Let me just double click, double check if this is the, the correct. No, it was wrong. So that's the correct tenant ID. And then you simply navigate to um, one certificates and secrets and you create new client secret. Let's use it just for three months because I don't want to have it longer. And you copy what? You copy the client secret, right? So the value here. Done. And Having this connection created, now it will allow this action to actually run and this action too. So I need to change this to uh, That's interesting, so it doesn't work. Let me try it again. Yeah, so I'll create a service principle. Um, And so the value for the secret. And then client ID is this one here. And then tenant, well, this is this one here. Wow, 
well, not now this worked, so possibly I just made some kind of a mistake of spelling, uh, spelling mistake. So anyhow, uh, be sure that all your other actions which are performing this unbound action are actually using the same connection reference or the connection um, as the service account you have just created is registered. And also, if you're doing the same thing as I do, so um, if you're using these trigger conditions so that the flow uh, which is fired whenever a pipeline is initiated, or the deployment is initiated, be sure to update all these, um, all these, you know, um, literals here to match your new either, I mean, both the pipeline and the stage name and so on. So um, for that, I will use the updated values. So that has to be deployments with pipelines. And this will be the dev to prod and that the pre-export status is 20. So it's pending. Okay, so now I can save it. And let me simply, oh, um, one last thing, obviously, if you want to allow any other user than you to be able to use this pipeline, then obviously you have to share it with them. So then navigate to share, manage access, and then, uh, and then grant them the read access. So this is all they have to have. And also, and also don't forget to grant them, uh, to grant them, sorry, to grant them the access, the security role in this, in this uh, environment that is called that is called the pipelines deployment user, the deployment pipeline user, right? So this is all that you have to configure for the user with whom you want to share it. And I mean, who you want to um, allow to use this application, use this solution. Okay, so right now I'll switch to John Researcher's um, account. Um, and I have a quite a simple solution that I'm just signing again. Sorry, confirm. Just six. Yep. So then John is going to deploy this some call solution from this dev environment into this prod environment. But first I will delete the some call solution from this environment because I don't want it to have here. So there is one connection reference this one, SCS SharePoint Con, and it is using some shared, um, you know, connection in this dev environment. I will sl switch it to John's um, so that this is going to run on behalf of John in this dev environment. And so once John is ready with a solution to be deployed, he can now navigate to pipelines and here he will find this deployment with pipelines up, right? So that is that pipeline that I have just created. Let me just check if the solution is being deleted. Is deleted. No, it's still being deleted. Uh, right. Now note this small info here that is saying this that the deployments may be pending until an associated background process succeeds. Uh, and this process is managed by your admin. So that tells a user that this pipeline may actually require some kind of additional approvals or some kind of whatever else, additionally to just be a straight for deployment. All right, so now the solution is gone from the pro environment and I can continue with the deployment. So first, uh, as previously, you have to select whether you want to uh, deploy it now or schedule it for later. Uh, in a second step, there is where the whole validation is taking place. So it first 
checks if the values for the event variables is pro are provided, uh, if the connections are set up for connection references, um, if there are no dependencies missing in that solution which is about to be deployed. So like if you don't have to really add any required objects. So this is the, the, the most important step that validates your, um, your deployment. Uh, all right, <clears throat> now as you can see here, uh, I have two connections, so like the one, one connection, the one that is using a trigger, uh, while well, it is obviously being, um, fired or it is using the OAuth, uh, connection of the user who is making a deployment. So John researchers in this case, but there is as well a second, uh, connection that is using this service principle. And here in the, in the, in the bottom, you have that checkbox that you have to click so that, um, your connections are shared with service principle. All right, then you have to provide uh, values for the SharePoint, uh, sorry, for the environment variables. So let's say um, I'm going to use projects and some large list in here. Um, and that's done. So right now I can hit and initiate the deployment. But this is not all in terms of the deployment itself, because right now, after the export of artifacts is completed, um, the approval is started. So you see that the deployment now is pending and I'll open Teams in here. So there is an approval uh, and I'll simply navigate to this approval. And there it is. So I have all this information about what is the pipeline being used, what stage, uh, what is the solution version, who initiated it. Um, well, John did not put any request comments, so there is nothing, but I can say, oh, good, go. So this will simply approve this, um, this uh, deployment. And when I switch back to John's environment, uh, it will soon switch from uh, the pending into, yep, the deployment is currently uh, undertaken. So one more thing, when you navigate to uh, the deployment uh, pipelines, uh, the, the pipelines, the deployment application in your, uh, in your um, pipelines environment, and you navigate to that stage, which is now currently being deployed, uh, there you'll find all the history. So all those, um, uh, well, deployments that have been triggered using this this uh, pipeline. And when you open the details of such a deployment, here under deployment nodes, you will find some information about uh, that were provided either by uh, the requester or by you in the process. So as you can see here, um, I have here the approval comments put uh, with all the information taken from the approval. I was not very creative, I just put all these same things. And this is done that way that when you open this approval flow, you'll notice that after the wait for the approval is completed and then it is approved, then um, the action that is actually updating that um, status to release it for deployment, it is updating these two fields, the approval comments, approval properties. And uh, in my case, it's just updating this with the same value, so with the outcome from the approval. Now, how this flow is built in general, you can find in my other video that is about the uh, the approvals around Power Platform Pipelines. Um, and let's check if the deployment has been completed, All right? So it's completed. So now once I switch back to the prod environment uh, and open this solution that has just been deployed, you will notice that it hasn't been deployed by John but that the owner of this solution is my pipelines deployment account, right? So this is that service account that I have used. Okay, so um, this way you are really able to work with Parable from pipelines. So you can now either initiate the deployment as the user uh, who owns the stage in the, uh, in the pipeline. Uh, so a specific user's account, or you can use an application account that you register in Azure. Uh, in both, in both, uh, approaches, you can uh, utilize a so-called delegated approval, uh, which will 
simply um, help you or let you to, um, you know, use use the different context of the account on a target environment than to the one that is uh, that is created on the dev or test environment, which is well obviously important in many ALM scenarios because you may want to use a specific user's connections. Uh, or specific account connections on the target environment, uh, because that account has spec or required permissions in that account, in that environment, whilst, um, the development, developer's, uh, account does not really have to. Um, other than that, uh, you still have to be aware that it requires to grant both the application account or the delegated account, delegated users account. Um, quite a high permissions. So if you're sharing this account with other employees, then you might reconsider it twice. If it is a very, very, um, valid approach. Um, and well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking really forward to have this solution to have Power Platform pipelines finally embed into, uh, the Power Platform Admin Center to be able to really benefit uh, and allow every every single um, employee within the company to, to benefit from uh, this tool as well. Okay, and that is, uh, that's, that is it from me. Um, I just want to ask you to, you know, subscribe to my channel, leave a comments if you have any, and until the next time. Thank you very much for watching and have a, well, great time. Bye.